Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. A couple years ago, I made a video about wrapping tubes, such as this. I was making rockets at the time, but I've since had quite a few questions about people wanting to know how to wrap spiral tubes when you have overlap. Now, when you're making rockets, you typically don't want, you know, you want the smoothest body tube that you can get, and so you don't make it with overlap. However, there are many more applications where you will wrap spiral tubes where you're going to want overlap, such as if you're, well, wrapping a shipping tube like this, because it's got a little bit of overlap there, maybe 5 or 10%. Maybe you want to use electrical tape or duct tape, and you're wrapping wires or who knows what. Maybe you've got sheet metal, and you're wrapping, uh, making spiral ducting. There's all sorts of reasons why you might want to make spiral round tubes that have overlap. And so in this video, for those of you that are curious and have asked, I'm going to show you the math behind how to make your own spiral wound tubes with overlap. Now, if you want to skip all this and so you just want to do it, go download the spreadsheet. I've updated it now to include a section for overlap. But for those of you that are curious and have asked for how you do it with the math, I'm about to show you this. So here we go. Spiral wound tubes with overlap. When you look at a tube from the side, or at least your mandrel, right, you've got some length and you've got some diameter. For an example, let's work one. Let's say our diameter is 4 inches. Let's say our length is a foot. So it's a foot tall. So there's our mandrel. Now, we want to wrap this with something that's probably rectangular. Now you don't get to choose this most likely. You're going to either be stuck with the tape or whatever piece of craft paper that you've got from your supplier, and it's going to have a specific width. Now the length, of course, is one of the things we're going to find. But when you unwrap, when you look at it from the side at least, right, it's going to look something like this. You're going to have these spirals that go up like so. And then of course, whatever you specify on these hidden lines here, I'll show you, you've got some overlap right? When you unwind this, right, it's going to look like this. Big, long, rectangular thing. It's going to have, well, it's a big parallelogram, basically. So one of the things we're going to find out is what is the length of this piece you need, what is the pitch at which you need to wrap it, and maybe what's the start angle here so you can get it going. Now, this start angle theta here, measuring a theta on something that's curved is really hard to do. It's much easier to simply make marks along your mandrel and then make sure that as you wrap that uh, tape around each time that you hit those marks. Of course, now if you mechanize this, the pitch is simply the distance traveled by your carriage for every revolution of your mandrel as you wrap this thing. So. Let's get going to the math here. When you start your wrap, if you unwrap this, imagine this piece that's going to look something like this, right? It's going to be a triangle. Like, we're looking at this lower piece here. If we unwrap it, it's going to be a triangle, right? And it's going to be a lot longer than our mandrel here. This edge here, right, we went around one time. This edge is simply pi d, the diameter of your tube. In our case, it's 4 inches, and I deal with this stuff enough to know that that's 12.57. Now, you've got this strip here. It's got some width. Let's say it's 2 inches. And let's say you want some overlap, right? Because in the last video I showed you, and in the Excel sheet, couldn't compensate for that. But let's say, well something that's not too easy. So let's say it's a 40% overlap. Now what we need is what's left over, not what's overlapped to calculate this. Well, 40% of 2, right, is 0.8. We need what's left over, so we need 1.2. 1 1.2 1 sticking out. All right, so we've got our triangle here, but of course our piece is not aligned with this bottom, is it? No, it's tilted, right? So you've got 
this rectangular piece that's going kind of like this. It's tilted at some sort of theta. And so this here, we don't know this. This is the pitch that we want, but we can't get that just yet. It's a two-step trig problem. So let's do step one. This is a right angle here. This, by similarity, is also theta. This right here we know because we just got it from here. This is 1.2, isn't it? So we've got a hypotenuse. We've got the opposite side here to our theta, so it's a sine function. So we're going to go, I always have to remember we're, we're sliding things, you know, diagonally across the equal sign. So if sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, the sine of this angle is 1.2 over 12.57. So we can use our trusty TI-89 and do the inverse sine of that, or arc sine, sine of minus 1, of 1 1.2 over 12.57. Oh, hang on. I'm in radians. Let me get to degrees. Radians aren't useful for this. Five point four seven eight degrees. So we've got our theta of five point four seven eight degrees. Now we can solve for this pitch. I'm going to erase this little theta right here because it's kind of in my way. And this is the number we want, isn't it? So now we've got this theta, which we know is five point four seven eight. We need to solve for the hypotenuse. We've got the adjacent side. Well, adjacent hypotenuse is a cosine relationship. Cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Our adjacent, we know, because it's 1.2. The hypotenuse is the pitch we're trying to solve for. So that's just going to be our P. Cosine of theta, we know, is five, the 5.478, 5.478. So if we plug all this in, we're solving for our hypotenuse. So we're going to slide it this way. We're going to slide cosine down. So we're going to have 1.2 over the cosine of 5.478. which is one, so our hypotenuse, or pitch, is 1.2055. 1.2055 inches, millimeters, angstroms, cubits, whatever. Just be consistent in your units. And so, here's this piece of the puzzle. Your pitch along here is 1.2055. The last thing we kind of need to know is how big of a piece do you need so that you can wrap this thing around? Because when you measure something, right, this is going to start as a rectangle. So this corner here is going to be here, and this corner here is going to be here. We're measuring from here to here along the same edge. We don't switch edges when we're measuring something. But all this down here was cut off, right, because you don't want that below, sticking down below your mandrel. This piece up here was cut off. Well, one of these ends is already accounted for in this length measurement. We know what our pitch is. We know what our height is. So we simply divide our height by our pitch to get the number of revolutions we need on our wraps. That's step one. So 12 divided by 1.2055. Call this revs is 9.95, almost 10 total turns. So we've got our revs of 9.95. The one thing we don't know, though, is exactly how long this piece is. We could use trig again to find the length of our big hypotenuse, but let's use Pythagorean's theorem because we haven't used that yet. So the length of our piece per rev is the square root of a squared, which is 12.57 squared, 
plus 1.2055 squared, which equals square root. Twelve point six two call it six three. Oh, that doesn't erase very good at all. I knew it. Twelve point six three or six two seven seven. So revs times the length of one rev, remember because it's more than pi d because our piece is tilted. So twelve point five three six three then excuse me times nine point nine five times nine point nine five. We're obviously going to have rounding errors here, is 125, oh, I keep putting the decimal plane too early, <laughs> 125, oh, let's just erase that, ah! 125.65, about. Okay, but remember now, this does not include that piece that came off here at the bottom, because when you measure a strip, you measure along the same edge, and our measurement already includes one of these cutoff pieces, but not the other. So we have to add one more full wrap to this in order to get the length of the strip we need, because we're, we're basically cutting off one, or exactly cutting off one full wrap's worth. We want to make sure we have enough material. If it doesn't come off a spool, you know, and we have to pull it all out, but we also don't want to have too much. So 125.65 then, plus the length of one more wrap of 12.63, that's an 8, that's a 3, that becomes an 8, that's a 3, that's a 1. 138.38. And that is the last piece of our puzzle. We've got the length of the strip we need. We've got a helix angle to start it out at, should you be able to measure it. But like I said, that's probably not terribly useful unless you can make some sort of a jig that goes around a curve. Or maybe that's actually the angle you're going to program into your machine and your software. But most likely what's going to happen is you're going to program in a carriage delta x per rev of your mandrel. That's most likely how this is going to work if you're going to do it mechanically. But if you're going to do it manually, you're simply going to mark on your mandrel every 1.2055, which is our pitch. And then you're simply going to make sure that as you come around on that, that you hit those marks each and every time. But like I said, you don't have to do all this math. You can go to my website, mikesinventions.com, on the downloads page and snag this spreadsheet, which has now been updated to include overlaps. I hope this helped you guys out, especially those of you that asked and were curious about how the math actually works for this. It's really not that tough. It's just a couple of trigs and a little bit of measuring. But I hope this helps. So go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.